In this video here, we'd like to introduce an entirely new type of circuit element that we haven't used at all thus far in this video sequence, and it's called the capacitor. So we are familiar a little bit with the resistor. Uh, we said very early on in our video sequence here that what a resistor is is sort of a device here that current can definitely flow, flow through, little electrons can flow through this device here, and as the current flows through, it encounters these uh, sort of nuclear cores in here of the material that the that the resistor is made out of. And they would bounce around here, <laughs> have all these collisions here, but eventually come out. But the point is that the resistor here slows down the, the flow of charge here. Slows current. And the resistor was given the symbol that looks something like this zigzag right here to indicate a difficult path for electrons to flow through. And it's given the symbol R, and the units that we say are in ohms. And we used a 100 ohms 2,200 ohms and a 10,000 ohm resistor quite a bit and we saw a little a lot of different devices like the photocell here and the potentiometer these devices change their resistance in response to some physical stimulus here a capacitor doesn't look anything like this a capacitor you would think of a capacitor as two parallel plates these are both meant to be metal conductors here conduct electricity here that are both separated by a distance here. So in other words, there's a gap here that current can't flow across. And that's in a nutshell what, condu what capacitors are. Two conductors separated by some distance. So well, what are these good for? Well, they're good for the following here. Suppose we, con we connected these two conductors separated by some distance here to a battery, something like this and something like this. What would happen is charge would indeed flow out of the battery, just like they would through a circuit, but instead of traveling across this gap, which they just cannot do, the charge will just collect on the plate. So because this is this side, this plate is connected to the positive terminal of the battery, and this side is connected to the negative terminal of the battery, you sort of get a, a situation here where a bunch of negative charge is going to end up on this side of the battery, and a bunch of positive charge is going to end up on that side of the battery. And they will be equal and opposite here, so I've sort of drawn six negative charge on this side here, one, two, three, four, five. That means there'll be sort of six positive charge on that plate right there. So my drawing is a bit failing, but that's in a nutshell what capacitors do. And it's even true now, suppose what would happen if I removed the battery at this point, if I sort of took the battery away, what would happen to the charge? Well, I submit to you, and we'll look at some circuits in coming videos that will sort of show this here, the charge will indeed remain on the capacitor plates. So if we had six on there, one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, four, five, six, charge will remain on there. So you can guess what capacitors do. If resistors slow current, capacitors store charge. Now I can say they store current because nothing's really flowing right here except for during that charging process, but when they're all done, they store charge. Uh, there might be a little bit of a misnomer to say store charge because there is no sort of net charge on the capacitor. It's okay to think of them that way, but it might be better to say that they store energy and the energy is stored in terms of this charge here, which has become separated. But we won't worry too much about that. For now, we'll just say that capacitors store charge. They come in a variety of form factors here. So the ones that we'll use, because they're sort of easiest to get a grasp on, sort of come in these cans here like this. And they even have the two leads on them. So each one of these leads here are the leads that we drew here that go to the respective conductors that are not allowed to touch. So there's a form factor right there. And typically when you see these big ones like this here, they sort of have a capacitance into the ten hundreds or even thousands. Now of what? Well, if resistance was in ohms, it turns out that capacitance here has a unit of F, which is a farad. And so these cans here, these so-called electrolytic capacitors, have capacitance into the microfarads, 10 microfarads, 100 microfarads, 1,000 microfarads. And micro is, of course, a millionth. So 10 millionths of a farad, 100 millionths of a farad, or 1,000 millionths of a farad, something like that. The other form factor you see quite commonly are these ceramic ones that look like these little disks. So once again, this is the main capacitor in here. And these leads here are what go to the two plates of the disc in here, here's one that's really small in here, and as the, the physical size indicates here, these small ceramic ones here typically are going to have capacitance into the, let's put some numbers here, 1, 2, 10, maybe even 100, and these are going to be picofarads. So you put a P in front for picofarads, 
and the pico has sort of this x one here of 10 to minus 12 on there so they're quite small like a one picofarad capacitor would have a capacitor of 0 0.1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 and a one something like that so it just turns out that these are kind of awkward numbers but the farad as defined sort of physically is just a very large unit so uh, although they, we do have very large capacitors now like here's another one here which we did not buy as part of the kit is actually quite large here and if you look very carefully at it here it is actually a 100 farad capacitor so we do have sort of big capacitors now but most of the time we won't use something exotic like this here we're just going to use something like one of these good old like this one here a thousand microfarad capacitor so we're going to go on we're going to do some things with capacitors uh, but just in a nutshell to wrap up capacitors store charge or probably better technically they store energy don't worry about the difference between the two if they're two conductors that are not allowed to touch so you can have charge flow into one opposite charge flow on another and if that charge source say like the battery is disconnected the capacitor will retain its charge it has a unit of the farad and typically we'll be dealing with capacitors in the tens of thousands of microfarads or in the sort of dozens of picofarads so there's your introduction to capacitors in a nutshell